Good morning, my name is Ray Reeves. I'm the president of Adventure Camp Rental. We're here at gorgeous Roxboro State Park in Colorado. Uh, thank you for renting a camper from us. This video will explain how to set up and operate your Viking tent trailer that you've rented from Adventure Camper Rental. We would encourage you to pay attention during this video. There is a learning curve to using a camping trailer. This video will be a great first step to it. On the day of your pickup, when you come to pick up your trailer, we will do a personal walkthrough orientation with you, which will follow from this video. There is a setup guide inside the camper, which has photos from the video on how to set up the camper. In the back of the setup guide is our troubleshooting guide with answers to common questions about how to use and operate the camper. In addition, we have a 24-hour tech support phone number, which you can call whenever you have questions about how to use or operate the camper. We're happy to help you no matter what time of day or night. Uh, at the end of this camp, end of this video, please make sure to skip down and take our video setup quiz. When you do that, it sends us an email showing that you've watched the video, and that way you wouldn't have to watch the video on the day of your pickup. Thank you again for renting from Adventure Camper Rental. Have a great trip. Savannah Reeves and I'm going to be your guide today for your setup and teardown of your Viking rental camper from Adventure Rentals. Before you disattach your camper from your vehicle, you'll want to step to the side and make sure your camper looks level from front to back. You may need to pull up onto a 2x4 or a piece of wood. After you've made sure that you're level, you'll want to use a chalk to put on the downhill side of your tire. That'll keep you right where you parked. We do provide you with two chocks, one for each wheel in your utility bucket. Next thing you're going to do in order to get set up is to go ahead and disattach the camper from your vehicle. First thing you'll do is add your wheel, which is located generally in the storage bin of your camper. You'll unplug your electrical connection, undo your safety chains, unhook your coupler pin, and last but not least, unlock your coupler from your vehicle. As you start cranking, you'll see your wheel start to drop to the ground. You'll want to crank all the way until the camper begins to lift up and off of the ball of your vehicle. The first step in your setup process after you get unhooked from your vehicle is going to be to turn your propane on. So that way by the time you are done actually setting up your camper, propane has had the opportunity to fill your lines. In order to set up, you'll first retrieve your hand crank from the storage trunk. It's square and will fit right into the square fitting here on the front. Before you begin to crank, however, you'll want to undo all four of the roof latches. To crank your roof up, you'll use this crank right here. You'll turn clockwise to raise the roof up. When you're cranking your roof up, you only want to crank until your fabric is straight. You don't want to crank it until it's taut because then you run the risk of it detaching from the ceiling. Your next step is going to be to pull your beds out. Please note that they do have a pull handle on them. We ask that you use that to bring the beds out instead of just grabbing by the bed frame. You'll feel and hear the bed lock into place and we'll show you how to verify that with the bed pins on the inside. After you've pulled your bed out, you'll want to make sure and verify that your bed pins are locked into the proper position. You can feel underneath to feel that the pin has come all the way through. This is what ensures that the bed is locked in the proper outward position. You have one bed pin on each side for each bed. It will give you a wide step to step on, but I will just have you note, if you lower your door and you notice that it doesn't quite come out all the way, that's a telltale sign that your camper isn't properly leveled, either from side to side or front to back. Then you can place a water bottle on the inside or a glass of water to act as a poor man's bubble leveler. camper to complete setup, first thing you'll notice are those two white electrical switches. When you flip your galley up, that's what allows the electrical system to work. In order to flip your galley up, simply lift from the bottom and allow it to rest in place. 
After you flip your galley up, you do want to make sure that your electrical system is working and that everything is in the right position, simply by testing to turn on your light. In order to get your bed set up the rest of the way, you'll lift up your mattress, you'll find your bed support pole. This end will be inserted into the end that is taped with red. And as you push it forward, that U-bar will raise to give you the support of your bed. Keep pushing and the pole will rest into the hook at the root. When you're setting up your door, you wanna take care that you are only placing your hands on the frame and not placing them on the windows or the screens. To start, you'll unsnap, unsnap your bottom snaps, and as you bring your door down, you'll make sure that it fits in the corresponding door channel, and you'll be able to hang the door on the U-frame at the top. Velcro the sides to give you the proper seal. The door is the important step. It will tell you if you've set up the rest of your camper appropriately. It'll tell you if your roof is at the right height, as well as if you're leveled properly. If you go to hang up your door and it's not fitting properly, please make the adjustments as necessary by either raising or lowering your roof or adjusting your level from front to back. Setting up your dinette is a breeze. Once you get in the camper, you'll move your cushions out of the way. And you'll have access to your table here. Set up just like a normal card table. You'll release the legs from their Velcro setting. Secure them into place. And drop down into the corresponding area. You'll notice on this side, you do have a backing board for your cushions to give you a little bit more support at your back. Now your dinette is set up on the inside. However, you can take this table inside or outside if you do decide you want to try and eat al fresco. You'll notice here on the outside that you have two flaps of fabric. The one underneath has some Velcro underneath it. Simply attach it to the corresponding piece of Velcro underneath the bed, and that's what will give you your secured seal so that nothing comes and bothers you in the middle of the night. Next step is going to be to put your safety channels up. Your safety channels are located directly underneath the mattress. You'll take the angled edge, slide it up underneath that roof line, and it will simply snap into place. After attaching your safety channel, you'll zip the side of your fabric, taking note not to zip it all the way down, leaving about an inch or two at the bottom. Then you'll fold your Velcro over and that will give you your final seal to make sure everything stays out. Your final step of setup is gonna to be to lower your stabilizers. Please keep in mind that these are just stabilizers. They're not jacks, so please do not use them to level your camper. You'll take your stabilizer crank, attach it to the bolt right there, and crank down. You'll notice the stabilizer start to lower. Once it makes good contact with the ground, that's how you know that you're all the way down. use of a fully functioning kitchen inside of your camper. Most of our units are equipped with both hot and cold water that you can use from the sink. As well, you also have a three burner propane stove. To operate the stove, just turn on your propane and flick with a match to light. If you notice that you're having trouble getting your sink to drain, Go ahead and open your cabinet door and note this drain piping here. 
since the galley does fold over to get stored in its travel position, this cord is extra long. So if you're finding difficulties in draining your sink, give that a tug or two to help loosen things up a little bit. While you're camping, if you choose to use the onboard water system, you have a couple of options available. If you're at a campsite that does have a pressurized water hookup, then you're pretty much good to go. If you're dry camping and you're relying on the water reservoir located within the camper, in order to get pressurized water either from your faucet or to the outdoor shower, you'll need to use your water pump. You will turn it on. You'll generally hear the water pump start to work. Give it about a minute or so to build the pressure inside of the system. When you turn your faucet on and you get pressurized water that comes out, that's how you know that you've built it. One thing to note is we recommend only leaving the water pump on while you need pressurized water. Aside from the fact that it's not meant to run constantly, it will significantly wear down your battery as well as cut down your furnace life. If you're trying to get hot water heater either from your sink or your shower, you'll turn your hot water heater on. When the light comes on, that's how you know it's been activated. When the light goes off, that's how you know the water, has, water heater has been ignited. Give yourself again a couple minutes or so to allow it to actually warm the water up. When you turn your faucet on and have hot water, then you know you have hot water. To operate your furnace, you have a thermostat located on the inside of your dinette. It works just by sliding this top notch all the way over. When you start it, you'll feel a click which will turn on the fan. What you're waiting to hear though is for the igniter to light. That's how you know that you'll actually begin to get heat inside of your camper. One thing to note is that although the furnaces do run off of propane, they are in an electrical ignition. If you are camping during cold season or concerned about making sure that your furnace life will last for the length of your trip, please make sure to either be connected to an electrical source at your campground or to rent a generator or solar panel as needed. Adventure Camper rents both of these accessory items. Right here on this side of the dinette table, you do have your battery level indicator as well as your propane leak detector. There are two noises that are coming out of there. The first is an incessant siren-like noise. If you hear that, exit the camper, shut off your propane bottle, and give us a call at that 24-7 technical support number. It's likely that you do have a propane leak. That being said, propane leaks are extremely rare. The noise that you're more likely to hear out of that is the chirp, chirp, chirp of the battery level indicator. Just like a smoke detector running out of batteries in your home, that means that your battery power is almost done. Located right here, you have your power control center. You have your power converter on one side, so if you're connected to electricity and you need to throw a breaker, go ahead and shut it all the way off and all the way back on. As well, the camper also runs off of automotive fuses right here. If you do happen to blow a fuse, please go ahead and replace it. We do provide you with fuses in the utility bucket as referenced earlier. It is very important, however, to replace the blown fuse with the proper color and amperage. We have a couple of electrical outlets located inside the camper. Please note, however, that these outlets will only work if you are plugged into an electrical power source at your campsite or if you're connected to a generator. Outlets on either the inside or the outside will not run on just battery power or off of a solar panel. Welcome to the utility side of your camper. Right here you have your hot water heater. You will not need to get into that, just be aware that when the hot water heater is on, that will get warm to the touch. On this model, you do have an exterior shower that's just located right in here. You have a hot and cold nozzle, so you would need to turn your water pump as well as your hot water heater on. You also have a handheld shower wand. Please keep in mind, this is obviously more of a swimsuit shower, unless you're much braver than I am. Up here, you have your city water connection. Campgrounds are notoriously unregulated. So if you do have a city water hookup, please use the water pressure regulator that we do provide for you in your utility bucket. Simply attach it into the spigot and attach your hose to the regulator. Down here, you do have the drain for your sink. Before you start pouring things down your sink, you'll wanna make sure that this is open. Otherwise, things will back up into your camper and that is not the way to start your camping trip. Right here, you have access to your refrigerator panel. You are more than welcome to use the refrigerator on your camper. However, please keep in mind that it will take about a day, day and a half to warm up or cool down, depending on how you look at it. As well, 
the actual temperature of the refrigerator will only become about 20 degrees cooler than the ambient temperature outside. Operation is fairly simple and straightforward, depending on if you're going to have an electrical hookup or if you're going to be camping with no electricity. Lighting your refrigerator is very simple and straightforward. I will just kind of warn you beforehand, the refrigerator itself does take about 24 to 36 hours to warm up or cool down, depending on how you're looking at it. And the temperature of the inside of the refrigerator will only be about 20 degrees cooler than any of the ambient temperature outside. So keep in mind where you're gonna be camping and how long you're gonna be camping for. Otherwise, to get it started is a relatively simple process. Simply undo your locks on the grate and remove so that we have access to the refrigerator panel. If you are going to be doing electric camping, which is the preferred way to be able to use the refrigerator, setup is a breeze. First thing you'll do is you'll adjust your temperature nozzle. We recommend having it on medium, medium to high heat. And simply flip the green switch. If you are not going to have an electric hookup at your site, you can run your refrigerator off of the propane provided. To do that, first thing you'll do is turn this knob here to high. While you're holding it down, you'll press the igniter button about half a dozen times. Keep your hand down on that nozzle so that way the propane is getting through as it needs to for about a minute or so. This silver tank right here is gonna let you know if your refrigerator has been lit. Simply come back in about 15 minutes or so after you've completed the rest of the setup of your camper. Feel it with the back side of your hand. If it's hot, it's been lit. If it's still just as cool as the day outside, then you haven't lit it. This right here is the exhaust to your furnace. When your furnace is on and operating, this will get warm to the touch. So if you have children at your campsite, please keep in mind of that and have them kind of stay away from this area of the camper. If you will be dry camping and do not have a water hookup and you would like to use the water system on board, you'll need to fill your water reservoir. Just drop a garden hose into the open spigot, turn it on. Once water starts spitting back out at you, that's how you know that you've filled your tank. You have an electrical cord here that is wired for a 30 amp hookup. You do not need 30 amps of power in order to run on everything on the camper. 15 amp would suffice. If you get to a campground that does have 15 amp, we do provide you with an adapter. This is useful for either plugging into your electri electricity at your campground or plugging into a generator. We understand that sometimes, no matter how much you try to avoid it, a camping trip can be stressful. So we try to alleviate as much stress as we can by setting you up for success rather than failure. Located within each camper is a utility bucket, which contains your troubleshooting and setup guide, a little dustpan and broom for some light cleaning, a lug wrench. Each camper is equipped with a full-size spare on the back in case you do happen to get a flat tire. You have your adapters, both electrical and water pressure regulator, matches, and spare fuses. Last but not least, you also have the tent pegs for your awnings for the guy lines. The bucket itself, you are more than welcome to use as either a trash can or to put under your drain to collect your drain water from your sink. Just as long as all of the parts and pieces make it back in and back to us, we don't care what you do with it. All of our campers are equipped with an awning. You are more than welcome to use them. However, we do like to warn you that these are kind of finicky. They're a glorified kite, pretty much just made out of tent material. So we recommend and strongly encourage that you do not leave the awning unattended if you do set it up. Like I said, a strong gust of wind can come right through and take it right off. And unfortunately, there is no insurance that will cover your awning. To set it up, however, all you'll do is unzip it, undo the ties, 
and allow the awning to start rolling down. When setting up your awning, there's two sets of support poles. The first will attach to the black brackets on either side of the awning bed. And then you'll bring your front legs down. After you get your top supports put on, there's two ways to get the rest of the awning legs up. You can either bring them forward and secure to the ground with a tent peg. Or you'll notice that there are two brackets on the side of the camper. So you can lift them up and attach to the side like so. To begin your teardown process, your first step is going to be to turn your dinette into a bed for travel mode. Next, we're going to work on getting the bed supports themselves down. You'll grab onto it, push forward to relieve the pressure from the hook at the top. As you pull it down, it'll bring that bow with it. Take care not to impale your loved ones as you remove this and just store it flat underneath the mattress. When you're ready to place your door into travel mode, you'll undo the Velcro siding, lift the door up off that U-shaped ledge, and walk it back. Again, remembering only to handle the door on the frame, taking care not to place your hand through the window or the screen. Snap the door into place at all four snaps. And your door is successfully in travel mode. and set down is going to be to raise up all four of your stabilizers. To complete putting your beds in for your takedown, you'll make your way to the outside, undo your Velcro, and unzip your tent fabric about halfway or three quarters of the way. Please do not unzip it all the way. You can move your tent fabric to the inside, resting on the mattress. Then you'll have access to that bed pin that we were talking about earlier. You'll want to pull the pin up to release it. If it doesn't pull up right away, you can always sneak your hand underneath the mattress, grab onto the bed frame, and pull it out while you're lifting up to relieve the pressure on the pin. To get your bed pushed in the rest of the way for your set down, First thing you'll want to do is make sure as much of the tent fabric as possible is resting in on the mattress. Give your bed a slight lift up. Push in about halfway. You'll want to check again to make sure that no fabric has made it in your bed rails. Once you've made sure you're clear, slide your bed in the rest of the way. If you feel any hesitation along the way, again, you want to make sure there's no fabric caught in it. And when you have about an inch or two gap between that rubber gasket, that's how you know that your bed is fully in. After getting your beds pushed in, you're ready to start lowering the roof of your camper. You'll head back to your hand crank, and this time you'll crank counterclockwise to lower the roof. We like to lower it in three sections. First one is going to be about two-thirds of the way down. Once you get to this point, you'll want to take a lap around the camper and start stuffing in as much of the fabric up underneath that roof line as possible. It won't be perfect, it won't be pretty. You won't get every piece, you just want to make sure a majority of the fabric makes it under the roof.
before you head home, the most important part is gonna to be to reattach your trailer to your vehicle. This is the part of the trip that people tend to rush through, but this is the part where we want you to slow down. It's very important that you make sure that the trailer is properly connected to your vehicle, not only for the safety of your family, but for the safety of others on the road. You'll start just by cranking down onto the ball, and you'll slowly start to see the coupler lower over and cover the ball. Keep cranking until your wheel lifts all the way up off the ground. You'll disattach the wheel from the tongue jack. You'll drop your coupler into place. Slide your coupler pin through the hole. You'll take your wiring connector and connect it to your vehicle. You'll want to make sure before you lock your coupler into place that you do have about a finger width between your flange and the steel. That's how you know that you've covered the ball properly. Your last step will be to attach your safety chains. And then you'll check your lights before you hit the road. Well, the best time to end a camping trip is right before the rain comes, and I think we're about to run out of luck here at Roxborough Park today. Thank you for running from us. I hope you've enjoyed your trip. Uh, please remember to take our uh, setup video quiz, which sends us an email so that you don't need to watch this video again on the day of your pickup. And also, please remember that we do sell new and used campers and travel trailers. And if you decide to purchase a camper from us, you can always talk to us a little bit about the possibility of applying some of your rental towards the purchase. Thank you again from all of us at Adventure Rentals. We hope to see you again soon. That's, That's a wrap. A wrap. <laughs>